Alright, so once you've grabbed one, you so you should be grabbing one of each of those. So you should have two different worksheets when you walk back to your desk. So make sure you have two different ones. One says um, reteach to build understanding, and one says additional practice. Right, why don't you put that up and then they won't bother you anymore? Oh, well, I, I was painting. Mm. Yes. And I hold up the. Yes, all y'all. All right. Everybody in this row, scoot your chair over a little bit, please. I don't know why you're making it hard for me to get you on that. Mr. Gill, would you like to make a light? Not that far. Like, you know, like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, There we go. Um, so for those of you new to the class, if I haven't been over this, um, some of you have been in here a few days, some of you brand new. When you come in, there will be bell work. Almost, I mean, there's almost no exceptions to that. There, I'm not going to say there's never going to be a day when there's not bell work. Um, it's an easy grade. Now, you won't see it show up in focus under like January 21st bell work. But what I do is I record it and then I use that when I go back and give like bigger classwork grades. Like there'll be a classwork grade, sometimes it's worth 25 points. And I'll go back and I'll look and see, did you do your worksheets? Did you do your bell work? And then at the end of the quarter, there's a big classwork grade. Some of you probably noticed that we're here last quarter that that brought your grade up a lot. Some of you maybe didn't bring your grade up because you weren't doing your bell work and stuff. Mm -hmm. Although this class is pretty good. Well. Um, other classes, some kids are not. So again, you won't see yourself getting a grade for it every single day, but don't think that that doesn't mean it's going to come into play on your final grade. Um, it's just I do it every single day, and that would be a lot of entries to put into focus if I gave you a grade every single day. So with this particular bell work, most of you were, were pretty good. I'm going to change it a little bit. And I'm going to say the pattern is adding four, but we're going to represent that as plus four. Or it's a lot of you said going up by four is what I should say. But again, the pattern is truly, we want to try to use math notation or math terminology. We're adding four. So think of it as plus four every time. Now, we could say a pattern is adding a negative number. So if those numbers were going down, we wouldn't say we're subtracting two every time. We'd say we're adding negative two. Because the pattern always needs to be based on addition. So if the numbers are going down, then the pattern is actually negative two. It's actually kind of what your rate of change was in a way. You did rate of change, although we didn't do any negative rates of change. All right, so anyway, the answer to the first one, again, most of you were good there. I think most of you got all of these. But. So next, what would X be? Well, we know that X would simply be the number before X plus whatever that pattern is. Well, again, so if the pattern is plus 4, we just use that information and say, okay, well, then X must be 25. Again, I think most of you got that. And then it's kind of the same concept. We wouldn't really say subtract four, kind of we would. Technically, we would say, we would say like use a variable, y. We would say y plus four 
equals 13 because we'd always want to say what is the uh, the pattern which is a positive number plus and then in this case the number before 13 which winds up basically if you solve for it becoming subtraction so y would equal 9. i'm not concerned about you knowing how to set that up i'm just showing you you're always basing it on addition that does come into play when you when we get more complex. It won't relate today. All right, so I think most of you got all those answers. Again, what you're focusing on today, there's a pattern in what this topic is. It's called arithmetic sequences. So if you want to write down that topic, it's called arithmetic sequences. Oh, now you do. It's, yeah, and it's on your papers too. But there it is in the blue up in the upper right corner. Why do we need this one? No, the bigger your vocabulary, the better you and your in life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's on, again, it's on your worksheets right in front of you, and this is how you spell arithmetic right there. So what you need to do next, um, copy down this table. You don't need to worry about the diagram and you don't have to copy all of this stuff up here. Just create the table. And, and it doesn't have to be beautiful, just quickly. Like, I mean, if you want to make it beautiful, that's fine, but you also need to be able to keep up. So, time is of the essence. What are we making? That table. Uh, I don't think I've said it in this class. I don't know if I just said it or not. I'll say it again if I did say it. So, again, for new people, but also for people that have been in here, um, I record the lessons. Pretty much every single lesson gets recorded. Normally, it's this class that gets recorded. Sometimes I may forget to do it today, and I'll do it tomorrow with my, one of my classes on the second day of the lesson. So, because of that, there, there are no like makeup days. Like if you come in and you're like, why well, don't I, you know, I was absent last class. I don't know how to do this, so gotta not take it quick. She is not here today. All right, thank you. So because I record them and because I don't see you every single day, you have two days to watch them. So even if you're sick one day, you can watch it the next day when you're closer to recovery or recovery. So if there's an exit ticket or a quiz or anything, you're expected to take that on the day I give it. You are out sick, like I said, I don't see you every day anyway, so that gives you an extra day to recover a little bit and watch the video and try to absorb the information. I can't, it's not like I can go back and do a lesson for you anyway if you get an extra day, so your best shot is just watch the video. Oh, and for you new people, I guess you need to know how to get that too. Get to it. Uh, so hopefully you've already copied that down. Oh, so here's how you get to it. If you're new, type in, so go to YouTube, type in Mr. Gill Algebra. There are actually two Mr. Gills that will pop up. Unbelievable that there's another Mr. Gill that teaches algebra somewhere. Uh, he's only got like one video though, so if you go there, you're not going to see much. But look, look for the picture of my dog, and that will get you to the right place without having to play around and look for the video. Yeah, he is pretty cute. He's a pain in my butt. Uh, all right, so back to the table. So what this is showing you, yes, sir. Uh, I was wait, or never mind. All right. So what this is asking you is for each row. So the row number is just um, what's the word I can use? Signified is what I was going to be used, but okay, represented. So the row number is just represented by whichever number is in the top row. So for example, for row one, we're looking at row one. And if you'll notice, there is one gray square there in the row. So this is one gray square. Well, the total number so far, since we're only in the first row, is, is also one. That's what that means. 
So next, how many gray squares are in the second row? No. Oh, it's there? Oh, this one's the chart. Oh. Oh. Well, that's the second row. That's not how many squares still. That's still, this means the second row. So we have three just in that row alone. So what we're really doing is we're really saying, all right, well, how many total do we have is the next missing blank? How many total are there now, now in the second? Hmm? Four, right? Because we had one here. Two, three, four. So there's a total of four. So the next one's already done for us. It says in row three. So in row three, how many gray squares? Well, it already told us five. And it told us now we have a total of nine. Uh, does anybody know? what the pattern is already. Have a good meeting. What is it? Uh, wait, are you talking about that row? Middle row, what's pattern? Oh, it's, it's plus two. We're adding, at least it looks like so far, we're adding two. We're going to continue to count for now, just to make sure that's correct. But right now, I'm pretty much leaning toward the fact that we're just adding two every time. So now let's look at row four. Uh, row four, how many gray squares? Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, holds true that we're adding two. Let me ask you this. What's the pattern to the bottom row? Three. Are we adding three every time? One. Oh, I see. Two, three, two, Are we adding four? I didn't add, I didn't add four to oh, one. No, I add five. To get yeah, five. Oh, yeah. Did I add five to it's one to get to four? Mm -hmm. Three. Did? It? No, three. I added what to one to get to four? four. Three. three. So did I add three to get nine? No. no. So what's the pattern? Is there a pattern? No. 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 There is not. So here's the distinction. This is the only real purpose of this slide picture. There's a difference between an arithmetic pattern, which is just adding the same number every time. And then there are other types of patterns. There is actually a pattern to this. It's just way more complex than just adding a number. See, I told you. There are also patterns to other sequences like this. What's the pattern to this sequence of numbers? Uh, I always do that. Well, being even is not a pattern. What's the pattern to that? Not by itself, no. So what are we multiplying every time? Two. We're multiplying by two every time, right? So this is a pattern, but it's not based on addition. It's based on multiplication. So there are all kinds of patterns. We're really only going to deal with two patterns. One is when we're adding the same number every time. So plus two. two, plus two, plus two, plus two. This, we are going to get to, this is called a geometric sequence, when we're multiplying. You don't need to write that down. That's a, that'll be a whole other lesson. This, there is actually a pattern to this also. I can tell you pretty quickly what this number and that number is without counting any squares based on the table. Um, does anybody know like the quick way to do it using the table like without having to count up squares? Does anybody know like the quick way to, to figure out this number right here without counting squares or this number right here based on using the table? It's not as simple as just multiplying a number. You kind of got to use the data in the table a little bit. Um, no, basically every time we add a new row, right, we're just adding these squares to whatever our total already was. And we know what our totals are. So really what we're doing is we're just taking the total that we had and then adding the next row of squares. So 
Again, if I take one and I added the next row, I get four. If I take a total of four and I add the next row, I get nine. So if I take a total of nine and I add the next row, that's 16. And then if I take the total of 16, add the next row. So um, you'll get questions like that on some of the tests you'll take where it's just kind of, you may not know the math behind it. Like you may not know the, the terminology or the notation, but you might just be able to figure out the, what the pattern is. And it's not always just adding a number or multiplying by a number, but there could still be a pattern like this. One. And that'll save you a lot of time on test. A lot, a lot of time. If you can figure those little, they're not really tricks. I mean, there's math behind them. All right, so again, only real point of this is that an arithmetic, an arithmetic, it is hard to say, arithmetic sequence is just based on adding the same number every time. But there are other patterns. Uh, I'll delete that later. All right, so you need to write down. I'll zoom in for those of you that have vision issues, which are a lot of you. All right, so here's what you need to copy. You don't need any of that text. I'm going to explain all of that. But you do need all of this. And we're going to go through this one fast, but the next one we'll spend a lot. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We don't go through this one fast because it's notation. And the same notation is used on the next formula. So we won't use this formula a lot, but we will use the notation. This one is the main thing you need to get out of today's lesson. If you don't get anything else, you need to understand what that is, which is the variable D. Because called difference, and difference starts with a D. It's funny how math works like that. We use F of X because the word function starts with an F. We use, what else is like that? Mm, I know there's another one. So once you're done writing, kind of just put your pencils down and look up so I know people are finishing. So I know when to start. So I don't have to keep asking. Uh, we need tennis players, by the way. If anybody wants to try for tennis. Tennis. Not everybody laughs at tennis. Like, tennis was a huge sport at my school. Oh, man. <laughs> Our tennis team, like you. There's nothing I'm wrong sure with it. Here, it's but. just like not a sport that we're used to for generations. I know, but it does. Oh, what I'm saying it was dude, huge on where I was. Like, so, which is funny because it was still Florida. No, that absolutely is a Florida sport. That's where you're crazy. That's where you're crazy. It's a huge Florida sport. You like live in an area where golf and tennis are two of the biggest oh sports there are. Especially golf. I know you guys don't get introduced to those as much as other people, but. Yeah, and our, our school, our tennis team had like two thirds of our points toward like the high school competition. Like more points than like some of the other sports combined. I'm really hmm? Yeah, you are. I agree with that. What are you doing about that? Do you have glasses? You just forgot them. I see you in glasses. No, I left them in the criminal justice. That's why I asked them. Oh, oh. Yeah. Just you want oh, them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we can work around that unless you just want to. I just don't want them to get, like, I don't want to touch them. Do you know, like, is it with a teacher? In the office of Miss C. So they're in the office. Whoa. Well, wow. Miss so I can email somebody. They might be able to just send them down. If they have a TA or something. Mystery balls. Mm, looks like most people are finished or look maybe wrapping it up. Remember, this is also recorded. If you have to miss any little pieces of it, like copying something down, you can always go back and fill it in later too. So I'm going to get started in uh, less than a minute. Um, so again, 
I know you guys start to freak out when you see all of this notation. It's not that bad. Uh, just like when you probably first saw this, some of you still freak out when you see this. Just like when we deal with all of these variables, they each have a, a meaning and a purpose. We're going to go over that now. Um, so in this, you know, this was slope and this was y-intercept. They stood for something. It's the same thing in this particular equation. And we're going to do another equation, but the notation is pretty much going to be the same. We're going to stand for the same thing in the next equation. Um, just remember, a variable, like, if you just see a random equation, like, you remember how we solved equations out before, like, when we did equations forever, like, big, long equations? The variable A in those equations did not necessarily mean the same thing as his. Like, the variable isn't always the same thing. It's only going to stand for this when you're dealing with arithmetic sequences. If you're just solving a random equation and it has an A in it, that just stands for an unknown number. Does it doesn't mean it's referring back to the arithmetic sequences. I've never ever really said that, but it just dawned on me that maybe that gets confusing. So when you see a B in an equation, like you know, y equals mx plus b, it only stands for the y-intercept when you're dealing with that particular form of equation, y equals mx plus b. If you just see an equation and there's a b in it and a bunch of numbers, you're just, they're just using b instead of using x or z or m or something else. Only when you're on the topic does it, does it stand for what we're about to talk about. So, we have all of these things that we kind of need to, boy, I'm going to, oh, I am zoomed in all the way, I can't zoom in anymore. So we have a number here. We have a letter here. We have that same letter there. We got a variable here. Uh, eh. Let's do this. Oh, good question. We're going to go over that. All right, so that's kind of all of the different stuff. If it's in the same color up there, then it actually refers to the same thing, even though it may look different. I'll explain that in a second. So, for example, here you see an N, but here you see N subtract 1, but it's really the same thing. It's just we've added, or not added, we're taking one away from the value of N here. Here we have a 1. Why is that green? No N there. Why make that green? Is it though? Yeah. Is it really? It's a number, that's why. No, because I have this green and that's not a number. Yeah, I thought it was the same. Because one is a because I'm going special. term and one is a previous term. Nope. Yeah. Why are they all in green if some of them are variables and some of them are the one? Uh, what do you mean they're the same, Aaron? They mean the same. They, mean the same. they represent the same thing. So that's why well, you're both right. You're both right. Oh. So this is really representing because it's in the same spot. Remember how we did f of x? So remember how we did f of x? And I said, well, if, if x equaled 3, we'd really write that as f of 3. We just replace the X with the number. That's all we're doing here. We're just replacing the N with a number. So N here just equals one. That's all that means is we've replaced the N with an actual number. That's why, that's why it's the first term of the sequence is because we're talking about an, an N of one. That's what's telling us it's the first term, is the fact that the n became a 1. Uh, do I have that? Yeah. I don't know whether you need it. Probably not. Maybe. Just when you're walking around the hall, you can just in case they need a pass. There you go. Uh, all right. Yeah, I saw it was short. So here's what you need to kind of understand out of all of this. This is, I think, the easiest one, the, uh, the D that's underlined in blue. Um, the D is the common difference, that's what it, the vocabulary term is, 
But this is just the, the pattern. This is what we're adding uh, right at the moment. This is just what we are adding. I guess you could say to each number. I'm not going to write that in. I don't want to get too cluttered, but like, for example, in the bell work, we were adding four every time. So D would have equaled four. We would have said D equals four. D is the number. It's the pattern. Um, it's not actually the rate of change, even though that's they're kind of similar. The only reason it's not the rate of change is because to be a rate of change, you need an X and a Y value. And we don't have X's and Y's. We just have one sequence of numbers when we're doing this topic. But it's similar. What are you adding every single time? And that is the value of D. That's what you would replace in this equation. And if you found the pattern out, you could get rid of the, the variable and say, well, now I can put that number there because I know what that number is. I know the pattern. If you have if you have the, the sequence of numbers, then yeah, you can figure out the number. But if you don't have the sequence of numbers yet, then you can't replace it with anything yet. So we need to use the variable D. All right, so I'm going to start erasing. So hopefully you have this stuff. You didn't need to write all this f of x stuff, by the way. If you did, you may want to scratch it out. That was just I was just trying to show you what we did before and how it relates. All right, now it's going to get a little tricky. This is. I would argue maybe the hardest thing we're going to do in this. It's a totally a concept. It's not an actual I math. Said the hardest thing of the year, I remember you no, not the hardest thing of the year, just in this. I, I don't thing. think this is that hard, personally, but it. I've it. seen it a lot. Well, no, this is the hardest thing that we're going to do in this lesson. Relative to other lessons, I don't think it's that bad. Assuming you have notes. Now, if you didn't have notes, then that's another story. But you'll have notes on my stuff. All right. So here's what we have to understand. Uh, I'm going to get rid of everything just because it's it's getting cluttered and I want it to be clean since, the, like I said, this I think is a hard. It's, there, thank you. All right. So you've got to be able to make the distinction between it's almost it is actually a little bit like the f of x versus x thing. We've got this whole a to the one thing or Again, the whole a to the n thing. But then within that, we just have just the number. We've already talked about d, so I'm not talking about that. If you can make this distinction on what the difference is between this whole thing and, and again, I don't think it's that tough, but when I walked around and did a, like I gave them an example and said, okay, now you do this one. And I walked around and there were not that many people that got it, which I was kind of surprised. If you can make this distinction between the whole thing versus just the, the variable n, then you're, you should be pretty good on this. All right, so there's a really short sequence of numbers, but that's fine. We can use that. So I have how many terms in that sequence? Four. Four, right? Each of those is called a term. Like the first term would obviously be this one, then this one, then this one, and then this one would be the fourth term. So first term is five, second term is 11, third term is 17. Fourth term is 23. So the a to the n, so let's start with the one with the variable. a to the n is just saying, what is the value or what is the number? Kind of like when we did f of x again a little bit. What is the answer for the particular term we're talking about? Like what number is in that position? Well, we haven't gotten it yet. 
So that's what a to the n means. It means what's the number that is there in that spot? Well, the n part is the spot we're talking about itself. So again, if you're not understanding, hold, hold the phone. So I'll write it out. So a, and it could be a number. It could be a to some number. It's not a very good n. I just made it worse. Hmm. Let's try that again. Problem when you're really zoomed in is this all of a sudden writes really, I could change it, I guess. So a to the n means what is the number? So they say nth term. I'm trying to explain what nth term means, by the way. If you wrote that, that's great, but you need to understand what the heck they're talking about when they say nth term. What number is in the, the place or the spot or the position or whatever word you want to use. We are referring to. What number is in the place or spot we are referring to? I put what twice? Is. What number is oh, yeah, yeah, there. I was thought you said spot twice. Is is. Well, that's because it's really important. So I put twice. Is. Yes. Is. All right. Uh, hurry, because you need to understand it. Because if you don't understand this terminology, then the rest of the lesson is impossible. You've got to understand. Even if I give you the formula, if you don't understand how to use the formula, it's going to be no good. So hurry back. Oh wait, where's the? Is somebody out? I already lose my pass. Did somebody go to the bathroom already in this class? Did I not get it back? On? God, it drives me crazy when. Uh, I'm not writing on this. So if you get caught, you get caught. I mean, not that you're skipping. All right. So now, here's the next distinction. Dis next distinction. In in is the, the place or the spot we're, we're referring to. The position, the place, the spot, whatever. Position, place, whatever word. Don't use all three of these. Pick one. In the list of numbers. Again, I'm using the word list, but it's really a sequence of numbers. I'm just trying to explain what the word sequence means. It just means a list of numbers. And then again, we really need to add in, I guess, the place is in, the list of numbers. Uh, I'm not going to write that because then I got to scroll down and zoom out and all kind of stuff. So I'll explain it again verbally. Ah! So in is the position that we're talking about in that sequence of numbers. So for example, let's use a to the one since they already gave us a to the one up there. A to the one is the, the actual number. What is the number that's in the spot we're referring to? Well, what spot are we referring to? Hmm? So what's in? What is the value of n here? A, one. No, a is a. a, 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 a. It's so, one, right? Because n, this is the this is the the variable n. Well, what's now in that same location where n was? A one, right? Well, that means that n equals one. If we took n and got rid of it, I mean it's literally just like we did this. We wrote a one there. So if we replace the variable n with one, then that means n equals one. Everywhere you see n, n equals 1. So later in the formula where you see n, you'd put a 1 there also if you were trying to do the whole formula, the whole equation. So if n equals 1, that means we're referring to which spot in the list of numbers? Repeat the 
question? I said if n equals one. So we're talking about a of one. Well, that if if n is now a one, that means n equals one. What spot in the list of numbers are we referring to? We're referring. What do you mean to spot? Which referring which to term? Uh, term? No, we're referring to the first spot. I just said over here. N is talking about the position or the place or the spot or whatever so, in the list of numbers. Are you talking about, you're talking about so, this one, right? Well, this one really. Oh, this one? Yeah. So wouldn't it be like this one would be put in parentheses next to the A? Next to this one? No, you're not going to see any parentheses in any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. wow. this, let, me, let me explain. I'm, I'm just asking. I don't expect you to know the answer to that. I just want some of you did. So that's good. But now let me clarify, and I think we can, once I give you some examples, I think it will be more clear. So n just tells us where we're looking for in the list. So if n equals 1, then we're looking for the first term. Now a to the n means, OK, well, if we're looking at the first term, what is the first term? Well, what is the first term in that sequence? No, the number. Now you can give me a number. Oh, what's the one. first term in that sequence? Five. Five. Okay. So a to the one. Well, see, and that's what I. I don't see it as confusing at all, which makes it harder to teach. A to the one is five, because it's telling me this little number here, which is same thing as in. This number is telling me which one of these numbers I'm choosing, I'm, I'm talking about. So if there's a one there, that means I'm talking about the number five. But I, you need, here's, here's what you have to understand. What is the difference and what do mainly, what do I replace the variable with? N versus like A sub N. This is A sub N here. Or then you got to figure out A sub N in subtract one. All right, so let's try another one. This is one that I want you to do. Um, I'm going to leave that stuff out here. I'll do it in a different color so it stands out a little more. I want you to tell me. See if you can tell me. So I'm talking about, I want you to tell me what A sub three is. And then I want you to tell me, write it down. Sorry, I want you to write it down. It should have been more clear. And then I want you to tell me what n equals. So write both of those down. If you can get just one of them, that's fine. I want to see which one you can get. But I mean, don't sit there and leave a blank slate. Think about it and try to, to give me your best guess. Even if it's a complete guess, give me your best guess. So I want you to write down what is a sub 3. And then what do you think n equals? I'm going to walk around, so write it, write it down. Same thing relative to what we just did for a sub 1. Same concept, just it's not, we're not talking about a sub 1, we're talking about a sub 3. I'm going to walk around. Oh, did you do this one? Yes. Oh, let me see what you got real quick. Yeah, uh, Yes. I thought you had a different number. Uh, take care of the pass. Oh, wait, there is no pass. All right, never mind. You know, uh, you're giving me A sub 3. So what I wrote in green basically is what you're in. Uh, no, you have the first one right, not the second one. Well, what's there now? And what we just did in green. I don't want it. But you're looking at what's in green. Don't look at what's in blue. Anymore. That was in a different problem. Um, it wouldn't be in because n is this. You got that right. So you just need to correct the other one. Uh, you just so you're trying to tell me what is a sub 3 and then what is n? Oh. Uh, so I got that one. And it's kind of, 
again, it's not math, like it's just all conceptual. So when I do it, I think you'll see it once I do another thing. <laughs> Yes. Um, yes, both. Both of them. You need to be away. You need to be away. I'm the main Yeah, yeah, actually, I call it Sits. How do I get in? Oh, great. Uh, so most of you are pretty good on it. I'm gonna go over it right now. Um, you were good. I think I'm pretty confident that you would have gotten it right. So here's what we're doing. If they ask you what is a sub three, again they are talking about what term is in the third position. Well, one, two, six. here's the third position. So the terms, not six. Bruh. Six is the D, oh. not the difference, remember? Oh. We said that earlier. Six so N, this one was a little tricky and caught some of you. N is already given to you. Yeah, we is just three. replaced N with three, right? Like here's the formula. A of N, well, we just replaced N with three, so N is just three. So you didn't have to look anywhere else for that. N is just always going to refer to the position that you're talking about. So we were talking about the third term, which means N is three, the third position. Um, let's do one more. I'm going to make new numbers up. Does everybody, is anybody copying any of this still? I'm going to get rid of all of it. It's, and again, it's recorded, so you really need to go back and look at it. All right, so 17, 25, and I want you to tell me what that equals, and then what does that equal? And so once you get this, that's why I say it's not real. Uh, I mean, it'll get harder, but um, it, there's not a whole lot of math involved in a lot of it in the, in the beginning part of it. There is math that will come into play later, but you just use the equations to understand the terminology. Do I have to write the bubbles? Can I just write first sequence? There you go. I'm not writing that. Yeah, first one. 41. Yeah, 49. Here. Here. I know, but you can't miss today's lesson. Unless you go back and came with that. Figure it out on your own from the video. Today's the only day we're going to spend on terminology. After that, I expect you to know it. And if you don't know it, I can't go back to the lesson again. It's like that. You've got to know the terminology to be able to use the formula. Right there. The A to the 4 and then N. Yeah, there's no math involved. If you're trying to figure out a way to do math, there's no math involved. I mean, no like calculation. You're just figuring out what? Yeah, it's like 49, right? He does it. No, don't play his reindeer game. I told you that What number did you put down? He put 41 down. See, where did you get 41 from? It's up there. Exactly, it's up there on the board. I wore a shirt yesterday that went by. You said there's no 41. You're so dumb. I think the whole class can see that there's a 41. All right, so we did a little better on that one. So again, wait, can you check it? Nice and clear. Oh, uh, I remember about to do it. Yes. So again, a sub four means what is the number that's in the fourth position? 
in the list. One, two, three, four. Well, it's 41. Okay. Oh, not hey, so if, if you, when you said if it was going down, would it be negative 41? No, it would be whatever number was in the fourth position. You just look so at the spot. Um, like, I'll show you. Number. I'll do you an, an example. You know what I'm talking about earlier, right? Like yeah. you said, so, and then N is just simply, we're talking about the fourth position. All I was saying before is you may see a sequence like this. Sometimes the sequence will actually, um, sometimes the numbers will go down in sequence. But you'd still just look at the fourth position and what number is there. You don't need you still don't need to. Yes, sir. Oh, the common difference. Yeah. 37, 37, 37, 37, 37, 37, 37, 37. Yeah, that's what the, the common difference is. is yeah. what, what, what are we adding everything? What would we know to make it a negative if they're If they're going down. If the numbers are going down, what number did I add to 37 to get to 33? First of all, that's right. Um, can you show me? So you added four to thirty-seven. Forty-one. Did that give me the next number? Yeah. You just told me four. I just added four. That gave me four. Oh no, no, you went down four. Yeah, but you. So what number be, are you added? So it's going to be negative, negative four. There you go. Yes. Yeah, ah. You never. The pattern to this is never four. Everybody, tune in. Eric, tune in. This is not a pattern of four. That is wrong. Could not be more wrong. That is just as wrong as saying 17 when it comes to a test. The pattern is negative four. There's no partial credit on that. So you need to understand if you see the numbers going down, you are adding a negative number. And you can test that by just saying, okay, well, if I add four to that, 37 plus four, well, that gives me 41. That's not right. So it can't be just four. There's only one number you're adding to that to get to the next number. That is a negative of four. Got to understand that when it comes to this too. Because I won't give partial credit if you get get the number part correct, but the negative sign wrong. All right, so um, I'll really quickly tell you what this formula is even saying. And I think it's the dumbest formula really in the world, yeah. but all it's telling us is that whatever number we want, like in the series, if we want to find the fifth term or the tenth term or the twentieth term, that term is based on taking the term right before it. Because right, if this is a twenty, then I would take twenty subtract one, and this is a nineteen, which means it's the term right before it, and I would just add on whatever the common difference is, whatever the pattern was. Well, in my opinion, that's that's kind of like obvious. Yeah, like you, of course, if you want to get the next number, you add on the difference, and that's the next number. Or if you want to to figure out, I, I don't, I don't even understand why they have it in here. I mean, I do kind of, but I feel like it's a little unnecessary. So anyway, we're not doing anything else on that. The next formula, um, we're just gonna skip the next. They, I had a little. Oh, Super zoomed in. Uh, oh no. Did I get rid of a page? I get rid of a lot of pages? Oh, there it is. I, somehow I put in extra pages. So again, they're using that formula. Uh, all they're saying is if you want to get the height of one of the stairs, so if you want to get the height of the 100th stair, you take the height of the 99th stair and then add 26 to it. Well, yeah, but I don't know the height of the 99th stair. So, I mean, I got to figure that out. So, anyway, it's dumb. Don't worry about that. I'm not even going to go over that. I did in, the, in my online class, but it, it's just dumb. I don't like it. This one you need to know. This is a big one. So, I'm going to zoom in on this one. The terminology doesn't change. Like, so that's why we spent a long time on terminology in the other one. So you'll notice D is still common difference. N is still the term number. Uh, A1 is still the first term in the sequence. Now they've just rearranged those variables though, where they go. So you need to copy that formula down there. I'll zoom in one more. I think it'll still fit on the screen. Oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. 
I don't know how to how I did that. That was pretty good though. It'd be fun to do. I do know there's a tool that will zoom in on a certain section, but I thought you had to um I thought you had to somehow highlight the section while we're doing it. I don't know how I did that. More importantly, I don't know how to get out of it. <laughs> uh it's funny. Um it I'm sure it has something to do with this little thing down. But I'll once you're done copying it, I'll figure out how to get out of it. Oh wait. Actually, no, I can do that right now because I can freeze this part for you and then figure out how to get back to it. Um, that didn't do it. I don't want to go to the previous page. I don't know why I said the Google can be writing That doesn't do it there. Oh, yeah, you just want my even the light in there. Oh, that doesn't do it. There we go. Um, so yeah, you should be copying that down. I think I only got one person online, Kylie. Oh, Kylie, you need to download two attachments also. Go to focus and the assignment for today and download the two attachments. That's what you're going to work on. We may not even get to it today, though, so you might yeah, not need no, it. But no. It has the two formulas on it. If it wasn't one, then it would explode. Well, how are you? Oh, we're back. <laughs> Hi. You're awake. Huh? Welcome back. I think said you're awake. So remember, this is recorded if you want to watch the part you missed. All right, so in this, this formula will be used a lot more than the other one. Actually, this formula will you be used. Can you write the um, definition? I mean, you should have the definitions on the other one. They're the same exact thing. Like, you notice A1 is still the first term in the sequence. Uh, N still stands for which spot in the list we're talking about. But that's what term number means. Uh, common difference is still D. So it's the same stuff. If you want to write that, that's it. So let's talk about how we use this formula. Um, let me ask you this question. Oh, wait, I got to unfreeze. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. So if I give you this list. Oh. There we go. Mm. This might be the same list. I don't know. Uh, if I give you that list and I say find this, I want you to find that. Or I guess I could have written it over here. There, find that. You know the pattern? Yeah. There you go. What was that? Write it down. I want you to write this one down. Uh, boy, you are missing this entire lesson. You didn't write it down earlier. Yeah. Well, yeah, A1 and A N. Uh, All right. Uh, I don't have a pass, so if they stop you, you just got to tell them. Tell them somebody lost their pass. No, no, no. Oh, maybe that is right. Um, I got it, Mr. Gill. Who said that? Me. 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 Me.
After an eye attack. So what's your A1? There you go. Uh, all right, make sure you can stop. I appreciate you helping him. Get all the good stuff in the Twenty. Finding A7. 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 Finding A7.
Forge is 98 is so much water, right? And I call it. How many fours do we have? 98 times 4, how many fours? 98 times 4. That's why we're saying 98 times so we have 98, we're adding 4 98 times. Well, what's this? Oh, you can use the Because you just can round up to 100 and then say, well, but I don't actually have 100 for it. I mean, not 300. Or I'm sorry, 90. Wait. Oh, yeah, because you're doing the 90. 99. Wow, I'm not doing that. That's how you get better. It's 23 for the bottom one. All right, so let's talk about it. Does anybody think they have an answer? Yeah. I, I have it for the column. Oh, I have two answers. Well, N is 99. That's correct, but A of N is not N. There's a number. What's next? All right. What does we mean? 98. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. No, no, 392. Right? That's some intelligence. I know the column number. Uh, we're waiting on somebody to get back, and as soon as they get back, I guess Jazz. Yeah. All right. So here's the end result of what you need to be able to do. So now we're just going. We're kind of outside the realm of trying to understand a bunch of stuff. This is what you can do on a quiz if you're struggling right now. So all of you need to be paying attention to this one. It's not going to help you a lot when you don't have the equation in front of you on a district test or state test, but for mine, it'll get you through it. So if you have this sequence of numbers, the first thing you need to do is identify as much as you can as far as what the variables are. And we know at least two pieces of this already. We know this. What is this number? What is A1? Yeah, it's the first term. A1 is just the first term. So we're going to be able to plug 3 into that formula because that's going to replace A1. What does the D stand for? Or not stand for. We know what it stands for. What does that equal? Oh, 23. Uh, uh, oh my four. God. I'm still thinking about 99. <laughs> Plus 4. four. Oh, you know. It's a positive, oh, hold on. Wait. positive 4 because we're going up I'm by sorry, 4. We're adding sorry, 4 every time. So now we've got a new formula. Three plus and subtract one and then times four. That's our new formula. Right? Because we've just, once you know the numbers for a variable, you get rid of the variables and you oh, replace them. I get A equals three plus N equals one. Uh, well, let me write in what we were trying to figure out. So if I'm trying to figure out A of 99, A what, of 99. what number would be in that 99th position? Well, I know this. That's times four, subtract one. Only thing I'm missing is in, right? That's the only thing I wasn't able to figure out. But didn't you just oh, figure okay. out it? Yes. Yeah, because we're talking now, we know what n is. So now we can actually put 99 in place of n, and we've got all numbers now. We can solve that out. Yeah. So you would say 99 subtract, so again, order of operations, we start with parentheses. 99 subtract 1 is 98. That would be 98 times 4, which would be our next thing we would do in order of operations. Frankie, what's 98 times 4? Oh, wow. 392. 392. Oh. 
So three plus. 392 gives me 395. So oh, A sub 99, so basically the number that would be the 99th number in this sequence would be 395. Uh, so I'll write it up here. And that is actually something you do use in real life. I've had to use that before when I had in something I was doing, there was a list of like numbers that had patterns, and I wanted to know one of the numbers way down toward the end. I actually used that map. Doesn't happen a ton, but it's kind of neat when it does happen and you know how to do it. All right, so we'll do a little bit easier one. I, I want you to use the formula. Don't just keep adding four. So again, same set of numbers. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll leave that part if you were still writing. Hey, I'll leave A. I'll leave A1 is that. Okay, you can erase it. Okay, erase it all? Yeah. Okay, and I'm not going to leave it. Do a circle and tap middle. Yeah, but I don't want to get rid of all of it. I'm leaving some of it. Yeah, same sequence of numbers. So I'm going to give you a different one to figure out. Um, yeah, but order goes. Yeah. After one. Maybe a calculator. No, I mean, she's like, So we'll do. There you go. Figure it out now. Do not just add four over and over and over again. Use the formula. Really not that. All you're doing is plugging in numbers in the formula. It's really not that. Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm excited. I didn't Wait a minute. It's hot. It's hot. It's cold out in the hall. It's hot in the room. It's always hot. Not in the winter or summer time. It's freezing. So apparently I have really good circulation because in the summertime it's freezing cold and in the wintertime it's hot. So apparently my air vents work really, really well. All right, so do that one. <laughs> well, good thing I left formula. I don't like it. All you gotta do is figure out how to plug it in. Formula. Numbers and stuff again. You, gotta pull them out you figured it out last time. You'll figure it out this time. I figured out how to. I didn't figure out what the problem. I figured out numbers. Well, all you need to do is really figure out what to replace. But you kind of. I mean, yeah, I've kind of, I've kind of already set it up for you to start. So. Well, there's only two variables. Well, I guess there's three. There's you got to replace this with something, which you know what that number that is. You got to replace that with something, which you got that right last time, and you should be able to figure out what D is if you got what it is. So what about I've already written that for you. That's what you're figuring out right there. That replaces A N. That's how you know what N is, because I just told you this right here. Huh? A one No, not one. Three. I got it. No. Minus one. What is A1? It tells you what A stands for. A1 stands for. Read. Um, A1 stands huh? for 17. Well, what, is, what does A1 stand for? What's the little oh, bubble thing? Call out. There you go. So what's the first term in sequence? Three. I just said that. Oh, 67. That looks like good math. Oh, I did it right. Piece cake, right? Good. I'm scared. Good. See, once, once you understand what the terminology means, this stuff is not hard. But if you don't understand the terminology, then it's impossible. Good. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Wait. What is? Wait. What's the? A home basketball game tomorrow night. Again. What time? Uh, what does it stand for, or what is the answer what is in this? It stands for how much. Now yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I want you to stay in there. What is A1? Read what it says. Read what A1 says up there. I can't. I didn't say that. It says A1 is the first term in the sequence. 
What's the first one? There you go. That's what they were here with. Good. Very good. Oh, it's three. Second. Oh. 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 Oh.
Well, I know n is 17, so I just replace n with 17. And then times the common difference, which is we're adding 4 every time, so times 4. Now I just do the math. So that would be, uh, ignore this, uh, that equals 3 plus 16 times 4, 3 plus 64. And I think most people wound up getting 67. But again, you're just plugging in numbers into a formula. The only hard part is understanding the notation so you can pick the right number to go in the right spot. Uh, so on your worksheet, the one that says 3-4 additional.